Over 140,000 people gathered in Tokyo for IREX 2025, Japan's largest robot show. Robots that walked, served, and performed. Living machines as extraordinary as any species on Earth. This robot is 15 feet tall, or roughly 4.6 meters. A person climbs inside to command 3.5 tons of steel. Made by Japanese company Subami Industries, it is called Archax. It costs $2.7 million, but this isn't just a toy. It is a prototype for disaster relief vehicles that move like humans, but survive like tanks the ultimate extension of the body. We see Yaskawa Arms playing a simple game of pool, but behind the game are precise instant calculations of geometry and force using overhead cameras. We see the arms chalking cues and seeking shots without a human guide. It looks like a game, but this proves robots can handle complex, unpredictable physics in real time. Muscle Corporation's Cool Wire Robot contemplates a different game. Chess pieces cap amber-filled bottles. Cables position the gripper above a piece. Descends. Lifts. Not a tremor. Cable-driven precision without the bulk of robotic arms, proving robots can be gentle, lightweight, and still amazingly accurate. Delicacy has its place in robotics. But sometimes, what you need is superhuman strength. We see the Finnick M2000 robot lifting a red sports car like a toy. Two tons, handled with absolute ease. While we sleep, giants like this are building our vehicles and infrastructure, moving weights that would break 10 human backs. It lifts with power. Agibot's A2 and X2 dance here, but their record is one of grit. The A2 walked 106 kilometers from Suzhou to Shanghai, China, three days nonstop. The trip was certified by Guinness World Records as the longest journey walked by a humanoid robot. Is this the future of delivery? Only time will tell, but it does show us that robots are no longer confined to factories. Mujin's arm loads an autonomous vehicle. No humans, just code. This is the dark factory, facilities that run 24-7 without lights or brakes. A man moves. The robot shadows him instantly. Noitum's technology bridges the gap between operator and machine. This isn't just mimicry, it's telepresence. It means one day a surgeon in Tokyo could save a life in a war zone, or an engineer can repair a reactor without ever stepping inside. Access Engineering's Movebot climbs stairs on omnidirectional wheels, carrying a teddy bear to prove its gentleness. 
but the use case is urgent. Japan's aging population. It could one day carry the elderly up the stairs of the homes they built, preserving dignity and independence when legs fail. Mech Mine's wheeled humanoid runs the concession stand. It takes orders and fetches snacks without fatigue. In a world facing chronic labor shortages, this is the service worker of tomorrow. It handles repetitive tasks so humans can focus on the connection. We see Corleo, a rideable robotic horse powered by hydrogen. One day, it may help us conquer rough landscapes inaccessible to wheeled vehicles. Mezzo's dual arms pack bento boxes with the chef's rhythm. Suction grippers place food on moving trays, automating the school lunch rush. It ensures hygiene and consistency at a speed no cafeteria worker can match. It feeds the worker safely, removing human error from the food chain. Yaskawa's robotic arms spray a car body with fluid motion. It paints curves no human hand could hold steady. This reduces waste and ensures a perfect finish every time. It turns the toxic, exhausting job of industrial coding into a clean, precise digital art form. These patrol robots created by Japanese company NSK work the graveyard shift. Meanwhile, down the hall, we see these robots created by Japanese company Nippo Dinki scrubbing floors while we sleep. Robots like these tackle the dull, dirty, and dangerous jobs, ensuring our spaces are safe and clean when we arrive. Unitree's R1 throws punches and flips for just $5,900. A few years ago, this capability cost millions. It is too early to tell if its launch was the iPhone moment for robotics. But we do know that humanoid robots are not just for labs anymore. They're ready for developers, schools, and eventually, our homes. Automatic Addison